Hey boys and girls, this is Larry with UBRailroad.com. Check me out. Okay, today's video is I'm going to show you how I built my tallest curved timbered trestle. Uh, notice I'm not going to be in the video today. Unfortunately, I didn't video it as I built it, so I'm shooting these off of my monitor. It's a 28 inch monitor. I hope the reflection and the pictures come out good enough to where you can see what I'm doing. But the first thing I did, unless it's straight, I put my Bachman track because it all snaps together, it stays in place. I've only got 10 foot width, so I needed something really tight, so I did use Bachman track. Boo! I know, but that's what I use. So anyway, I put my curve in there exactly the way I wanted to. And as you can see right here, I had to cut a special piece here. I got another little one over here. Here's one here. I made this down here, the perimeter. This is as wide as I could go in the aisle. So my building, or not my building, my scenery and my trestle cannot exceed this point. So that's why I put that down right away. Then I ran this in about the middle of where I thought I was gonna go. And then I supported this with just a three foot uh, yardstick. It's 42 inches over here. So this is what I did. And this is how I got started. And then this kind of let me know what my background was going to be like. Then I went over to the next one here. Uh, another picture of the same thing. A little closer up. But uh, you can kind of see how I brace it here at the bottom. Now I got two yardsticks holding it up. And this is where I'm uh, headed to with this. Okay, then, this is a yucky picture. Let me get you the good one. Okay, here's what I did next. I cut these out of pine, you know, like a, a one by two. And these are approximately six to seven inches. And I cut them periodically and put a little bend in it. Then I took uh, base wood. And I generally don't use base wood, but I just happen to have a bunch of it that was given to me, so I thought I'd try it. And then I cut them to uh, lay over the sides like this so that it would give it some texture. And then I glued it. These, these are like how I glued it together. I put a post in here, put a rubber band around it, and I hook it on the bottom. Works great for when you got to hold something together like on a box configuration. So this is the way I did it. I cut all of these six or seven and I made it fit and angled it so that it would fit underneath my track just perfect. Okay, next picture. Um, okay, here's, a, here's an overall view of it. Um, you can see I started putting some of the plaster in as well. Some of my plaster mountains. Just a mold. I just got a big mold, a general mold. And that's what I use for all my mountains. You kind of see another angle of it. This is the way it looks. Now this bridge is completely self-supporting on its own. It's tied in here and on the other end. And it does sit there. So my trestle really is just there for pressure. When the train runs over it, it just keeps it in place. But uh, it doesn't need to, to be uh, at the point where it holds any weight as long as it just keeps it in place. Like right here, you can see how these are all off the ground. Some of them are off the ground. Some I built two by four bases or what have you. Here's a piece of plywood that I put it on. And then I brought the, you can see my cardboard uh, mountain forms right here. They're gonna follow right along, light, right along with it. But right here, like if I stepped right here, right now, this would fall a little bit. It catches here and right there. But you can see that very little bit of it actually holds weight because the whole thing was just self-supporting, okay? Colored this trestle to see how it would look. You know, I got excited. But here's the way I did it, is I built all my trestles in place. I rubber band them the same way so that I knew the angle and the degree that they would be in conjunction with the base so that I knew the base of the track would lay flat on this and look the way it's supposed to. So I used this same type of rubber band technique. After I built the trestle or a bent, I would stick it up in there and put a rubber band on it and then go from there. Okay, let's move on. Okay, here, here's a bent. Now, a bent is the simplest thing in the world to, bend, to build, okay? There was no real rules for timbered trestles. That's why one in four timbered trestles ended up in a fatality, because nobody knew how to build them. 
One guy would overbuild his to death and the other one would build it so that it caused death. It, it was all up to the, the manufacturer. But the way I built mine is I used five legs or stringers. Some people use four, three, seven, whatever you want. I see guys put doubles here, uh, doubles in here. Any way you want to do it, nobody is going to come in and say, oh, that wasn't right. Look at this one over here. This was just a hodgepodge of all kinds of stuff. I just wanted to make it look bulky. So I just put a whole bunch of junk in here off of a, a single A-frame bent. But this one here, in reality, they would never exceed much more than 20 feet. Like they would go from here to here. Usually wasn't much more than 20 feet. This is like 36 feet. It's one piece. So go ahead and use the one piece. But if you want to be in a, a rivet counter, then you cut it right here. And you use a solid board here instead of two uh, small boards on each side. And then you set them on top of each other. That's the way it really worked. But the way I did it, this is all one piece. I got, I put my one in the middle. I knew how wide I wanted to go on here, approximately two inches from here to here. And then I put this, this one, about an inch, I think it was an inch and a quarter in on each one. And then I ran it down to the angle. And then I took that uh, snipper tool I've got <clears throat> and I would cut my angle on it and I would make them all match. Once they all match, then I took a little super glue and I glued them all up. And then when they're, when they're done, I took it apart, then I pinned them. I, I got a little air uh, 23 gauge uh, Brad pin gun and I shot them all. So they're all nice and tight. But you kind of see how it does this. This here is about, oh, 18 to 20 feet, 18 to 20 feet. And you do that, do that all the way down and you see how you double them up. You put one on each side, then you can put your cross members either on this side, one on this side, one on the other side, both on this side, both on the other side, any way you want to do it. No laws, no rules, no regulations. Just do it any way you, you like, you know. And then now you can kind of see how I've got a conglomerate of them going in. And you can see how I'm kind of bracing some of them up, you know, giving me a base, a platform, just a piece of plywood, you know. Go to the, go to your construction site in town and, and go through their dumpsters. That's where I go and get all my wood, except my cedar. I get that at the fence companies. Don't pay a dime for none of my wood. Um, okay, here they all are right here now. They're all in line. You can see how I got the rubber bands up here holding them all to the angles they need to be. Now that I know where they're going to be, uh, I will go ahead and start making my mountains to support all of this, okay? This right here is going to be the little tunnel, as you'll see when we're all done. Okay, oh, this one out of whack. Uh, okay, now this is, you can kind of see on this one, it's going to come down like, like this cardboard's kind of showing, and then I'll build up and, and make this. This one has no weight. And I don't think this one does. Oh, well, yeah, this one does right here. But these right here, this one doesn't sit on. This one don't. These two. You see what I'm saying? So you don't really need to, to, to put a lot of uh, construction in these. They don't have to be any bigger than, uh, like, I made mine all, I think, a half inch by half inch. That would be uh, equivalent to like a 12 by 12. That's pretty prototypical. So you'd be safe with that or any way you want to do it. Okay, so you can kind of see where this is going to. Okay, now I'm starting to stain it. Now I'm starting to put my X braces in. I'm starting to put my cross braces in. Uh, I still got some undone here. You can see where the tunnel's going to go here. You can see I start putting mountains in. I had to put these in before I got too far or else I wouldn't be able to get, get in there because you're going to see that. See how I put X braces here? I kind of overbuilt mine, but again, I didn't know what I was doing, so I just built it. You know, I put X braces on every one of them. But some guys will leave this one on or make X brace here off, off, on, off, off. Any way you want to do it, no biggie. Okay, now you kind of see a little close up. See how I put a stringers, double stringers in here? And you can even put little boards going this way to make it look like it's a catwalk for when they need to do repairs or up here. Any way you want to do it, you know, any. Anything you want to add to make it look, you know, like your own, do it, you know. Uh, next picture. Okay. See how I pinned them? Bing, bing, bing.
bang, bang. That little pin get really works nice, and it gives the illusion of, of heads on them and everything else, too. Now, I didn't pin everything. Sometimes I would just drill a little hole, and then I would put a uh, round-headed spike in. That's kind of what I'm thinking these are, because the pin gun usually buries them below the surface. But these were all done with the pin gun, and these were done with the little round-headed pins. And then that makes it look like a bolt, which makes it look pretty neat. Next picture. So you can see how, how I did all of this. You know, drill, 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 put your board in there. See how they don't come straight? Big deal. That gives a character. That's not a mistake. That's character. You see how I got him running the angle of the uh, plaster and all of that? So you, you, you're getting the concept of this. Just another view of it. You're kind of seeing what it's going to look like. Uh, another one. Okay, now you can see where my tunnel goes, okay? Uh, I stained this wood isopropyl alcohol, ounce of Indian ink to a quart, spray it out of a little water bottle or brush it on any way you want to, uh, dab it on, it looks great. Remember, before 1930, there's no such thing as creosol, so don't try and make it black, black, you know? Try and make it look like it's just stressed, weathered, natural weathered wood, you know? Okay. All right, now I'm just showing you how it looks from the other sides. This was really tough for me to put in because I had the mountains here and I had to lean over with tweezers. And you notice none of them are pinned or nailed or anything. Just put a dab of super glue on there and had a, a 20 inch tweezer and I'd lean over and just stuck it in place and hope I got it, you know. But it came out, it worked. Uh, just another picture of it. Uh, close up of it and eh, you don't need it. That's kind of looking in there. I like to get illusion shots So I take them from all kinds of weird places. Okay, then when I got to this end uh, kind of getting uh, a little out of whack here, but this is uh, like a black cheesecloth I thought I would try this. I read an article on it, so I thought I would try it. It would save me a lot of that uh, lattice cardboard work. So I put this in, and you know what? It worked out really good. This was like uh, three bucks. I think it's three bucks a yard at Hobby Lobby. So I gave it a whirl. It works great. Here it is complete. Voila! Tall timbered bent trestle bridge with a... Uh, Traffic for two-way cars with a single-lane bridge all decked out and tricked out. All done. Uh, show you right here. Okay, see this? Long single tunnel, blink lights before entry. Here's my tunnel. I do have lights in here now. I got a little set of headlights right here. So it looks like somebody's coming through it, but you got to get on your hands and knees to see it. So I don't fire it up much, but then you trick it all out and make it look pretty. And that's it. I mean, you know, it's not difficult to, to make this. You kind of see the other view after I put in some of my tall trees. Tallest tree on the layouts right here, 75 inches, which would be 150 foot, uh, uh, what, sequoia, uh, red pine, whatever. But anyway, let's see what the next picture is. Oh, that's it. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this. If you got any questions, you need any help, anything I can help you with, feel free to get back to me. Otherwise, this is Larry, over and out.